The Hawker Hurricane is a peculiar aircraft from a design and technological perspective. Being trapped in the same high-tech, low-tech limbo that many other aircraft of the era would find themselves in, such as the previously covered TBD-1 Devastator. For its time, the Hurricane was an innovative fighter plane, being Britain's first monowing fighter that replaced the Gloucester Gladiator. The design history of the Hurricane is quite a long story, having started as a Hawker Fury with a monowing in 1934 in response to a request by the British government for a new modern fighter. But this was rejected, and so Hawker went back to the drawing board and made something similar to the Gloucester Gladiator, albeit monoplane, with the same armament, fixed landing gear, and a Rolls-Royce Goshawk engine. But again, this was rejected in favor of the actual Gloucester Gladiator. So they went back, again, and made a sweep of changes, including doubling the firepower to eight 303 machine guns with four in each wing, switching the engine out for the then-untested Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, and adding a retractable landing gear, which for the mid-1930s was still not 100% commonplace among all aircraft. This design would first fly in 1935 and be accepted two years later, with production beginning in 1937. When war broke out, hurricanes were sent over to France to help bolster its air force in the war against Germany, scoring favorably against early Bf 109s and German medium bombers like Do 17s and Heinkel 111s. From this combat experience, Hurricanes would be upgraded with the new Rotal Constant Speed Propeller which boosted its performance to acceptable mediocrity, according to pilots. After providing cover alongside Spitfires in Operation Dynamo, the Hurricane would see its finest moment in the Battle of Britain, even though the Spitfire commonly takes the fame. Hurricanes were in fact the aircraft that flew the most sorties and did the most damage to the Luftwaffe, with some 60% of all Luftwaffe losses caused by Hurricanes. After the battle, however, it was apparent that the Hurricane was quickly becoming outdated and outperformed by newer German aircraft, with the loss rate having reflected that. After the Battle of Britain, Spitfires would take over the air superiority role from the Hurricane and relegate it to fighter-bomber duties within the RAF, after a quick period as a night fighter in the Blitz. Abroad, however, the colonies and territories of the British Empire would see the Hurricane in service for the rest of the war. In Malta, it would be hurricanes that came to retire and replace the gladiators' faith, hope, and charity in their constant struggle against the Italian Air Force. In Burma and the Far East, it would continue to fight as a mainline fighter against the Japanese, scoring some notable victories early on, but soon becoming outmatched and relegated to fighter-bomber duties as well after the Battle of Arkan in 1943. In North Africa, quite famously, hurry bombers would give hell to Erwin Rommel, providing rather effective close air support to Allied troops. However, German Bf 109s would remind the Hurricane that its days as a main fighter were long since over. The Royal Navy would also see Hurricanes throughout most of the war until sea fires came around. They would perform well in convoy protection and had great success intercepting and shooting down German bombers such as Focke-Wulf 200s and Ju 88s. Hurricanes late in the war wouldn't see much in the way of upgrades since the Spitfire was taking care of their superiority duties. However, that isn't to say the Hurricane weren't upgraded at all. There were a total of five different variants, with even more sub-variants that had smaller changes. The most well-known and famous variants are probably the Hurricane Mark I Revised, which housed the earlier mentioned Rotal Constant Speed Propeller developed in mid-1940, the Hurricane Mark II B Tropical intended for North Africa, which had 12 303 machine guns for a wall of lead as well as an engine dust filter, and the Hurricane Mark IV, which was the last major variant that saw mass production. The Mark IV was interesting in that it housed a universal wing, which allowed for easy mounting of mission ordnance such as 40mm anti-tank guns, bombs, rockets, and even drop tanks which almost doubled its field capacity. Each variant also had progressively more powerful engines, with the final variant, the Mark V, which only saw two examples of built, having a 1,700 horsepower Merlin 32, which was intended for low-altitude, high-speed fighter-bomber duty in Burma. In 1944, production of the Hurricane was ceased entirely, and after the war, many were scrapped. Only a few were saved to be put into museums, most of which can be found in Britain or various colonies that used the aircraft. Very few examples are airworthy today, with most that are belonging to heritage flights. In summary, even despite its somewhat troubled late war career, the Hurricane was an iconic British fighter for a very good reason. It was the gentleman's fighter. No excessive flash, just there to get the job done and pass the torch on when it was time.